Hello, my health and safety team. Welcome once again to our online tutorial on a Bosch International General Certificate. My name is Abu Bakar, and uh, today I want us to officially start on the risk assessment. And uh, since this is a very important uh, learning outcome, in this course, risk assessment carries a very big portion in the examination, both in first paper, that is IGC-1, and paper 2, that is IGC-2. So this is a very important topic that I want you to pay attention when we start it. Our previous lesson, we looked at the overview of what we are going to cover in this topic. So today we are going to define uh, the most used terms in this course book. That is risk, hazard, and risk profiling. We are going to define these three terms. We are also going to elaborate for more understanding. It will be a very interesting uh, lesson today because this subtopic or this learning outcome is actually an interesting uh, topic in this course. So let's start together until we end together so that we can benefit more and more information and knowledge. We can benefit more knowledge in this tutorial. So we are going to begin the definition and we are going to start with the, the first term, hazard. So what is hazard? Hazard in health and safety is defined as follows. Hazard is something with the open or potential to cause harm. Hazard is something with the potential to cause harm or anything that has the potential to cause harm is known as a hazard. So there is a broad classification of hazard that each and everyone who is interested in this cause, Nebosh, is supposed to really pay attention in this and understand it well because this is exactly how or this information is the right information that is supposed to carry and understand to the paper two uh, that is the risk assessment. So in the paper two, you will be asked to come up with five main hazards. And from the five main hazards, you are supposed to come up with 10 hazards out of these five main hazards. So the five hazards that you are required to come up with are the ones that we are going to uh, define today and elaborate. So... Hazard can be broadly classified as, number one, physical hazard. So physical hazard, these are the things which cause harm because of their physical characteristics. For example, electricity, work at height, radiation, vibration, noise, heat, trip hazard, moving machine parts and vehicles we are going to look at them into detail in the coming learning outcomes so these are physical hazards that have the potential to cause harm work at height radiation vibration noise heat trip hazard moving machines and vehicle are an example of 
physical hazard because they have a physical characteristics that can harm a person or a worker. Number two, chemical hazard. And chemical hazards, these are the things which cause harm because of their chemical characteristics. An example is lead, mercury, sulfuric acid, silica, and cement dust. We are also going to look at them into detail in the coming learning outcomes. Third type of hazard is biological hazard. And biological hazard, these are living organisms or living microorganisms that cause diseases and ill health. For example, we have hepatitis B virus. Number two, Legonella bacteria, which is responsible for Legonella diseases. And number three, rabies viruses. So these are microorganisms which can cause diseases and ill health. And this type of hazard is known as biological hazard. Number four, ergonomic hazard. And ergonomic hazard is defined as the stress and strain which is put on the body through exposure and movement. For example, frequently, frequently or frequent repetitive handling of small boxes leading to uh, inflammation of the tendons in the elbow joints. This is just an example. The work activity that causes uh, that involves the movement or frequently movement of the body, and by the end of the day, the body may have some inflammation in the tendons and some joints. This type of hazard is known as ergonomic. It can be a person. It can be a person working in a construction area. It can be a person working in an office. He or she is involved in handling some manual handling whereby his work activity will be involved into a frequent movement of the body, whether uh, bending, standing, going up and down. By the end of the day, the body will become exhausted and this type of hazard is known as ergonomic hazard. And the last type of hazard is known as psychological hazard. And psychological hazard, these are the things that have the potential to cause injury to the mind rather than the body. For example, exposure to a highly traumatic event that can lead a person unable to adjust to a normal life after the event. A condition sometimes referred to as a post-traumatic stress disorder or PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. This state is uh, a state whereby someone is involved into a traumatic situation or event or accident and after that event or the accident, this person takes long or he no longer regain his well-being so this situation is known as ptsd or post traumatic stress disorder so you'll find that maybe a person has witnessed an accident that has happened and maybe the accident has involved his close relatives or his close fr friends or his close uh, working colleagues so because of that uh, event, it has totally destroyed his will or his way of thinking. These are the five many categories. But out of these five, let's say, for, for example, a uh, physical hazard. In physical hazard, we have given an example of more hazards which are under physical hazard. We have said... Electricity is one of the physical hazards. Work at height is 
another physical hazard radiation is another physical hazard vibration noise heat trip hazard movement uh, moving machine parts and vehicle is are all these physical hazard so in the examination when you are coming up with the 10 hazards and you are going to put them in the risk assessment you're supposed to make sure that within these 10, uh, 10, 10, uh, 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 10 hazards that you're going to come up with you have a selected physical hazards let, let's say one or two then you have also come to a chemical hazard you have selected two or three you have come to biological hazard you have also choose chose the way uh, the, the 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 hazard that are inherent in the workplace that you are doing the risk assessment because the examiner requires you to look for a certain company or maybe it is your own company you are going to do the risk assessment so make sure that the company or the organization that you are going to choose in doing the risk assessment all these types of hazard are present so it will become very easy for you to come up with the risk assessment because you see exactly what you are you are required to fill in the risk assessment you exactly you, you get it right from the organization you come to the economic hazard and psychological hazard you are going to give each and every hazard an example and elaboration in the coming learning outcome so that is how simple you're supposed to to do for you to pass this examination that is paper two you're supposed to really consider these five categories of hazard and you come are uh, you you uh, you select 10 hazard out of these five hazards so it depends which are depends on your organization which types of hazard are present in that organization therefore you will choose and it will become very easy for you uh, to fill the risk assessment so let's move on so we are still under hazard you said for example we are giving an example of a physical hazard psychological hazard chemical hazard biological hazard and economic hazard so so a lorry moving around a site a site road is a physical hazard because it might run over a worker or a person sodium hydroxide which is also known as caustic soda is a physical is a chemical hazard because it is a highly alkaline chemical capable of causing corrosive or burns or corrosive burns so here are two example of hazards that they have been given uh, one is vehicle which is moving in the work site road and it can accidentally run over a person and if that is so or if that happens then this type of hazard is known as a physical hazard and a chemical hazard has been given an example here of the alkaline uh, part of the uh, caustic soda or uh, sodium hydroxide one of the example of chemical hazard because if you take the caustic soda you put on your skin uh, eventually it it will burn your skin so because of the effect or the corrosive or uh, corrosive burn that it will cause this is known as a hazard and it is a chemical hazard so note that a hazard is the something that causes harm or something ha which has the potential to cause harm so if an office worker receive an electric shock from an item of electri electrical equipment that has a damaged cord then the electricity is the hazard not the damaged cord so it is electricity that causes the harm the damaged cord is the failure in the control measure so failure in the control or preventive measures so if the cord were not damaged 
then the hazard will not will be still be there or will be still present that is electricity is still running through the equipment but it will be properly controlled and the electricity shock will not have occurred so here is a, another good example of physical hazard an office boy or an office worker which or who has been given an electric shock because there is a naked uh, electricity so because of the damaged electrical cord which can be a cable or anything else because of that then that is the reason why the worker has been given an electric shock so electricity is the hazard because it is the one that causes harm it is the one that can cause burn it is the one that it has causes it has caused the electrical shock the damaged cord which can be the cable is not a hazard because if the damage the, the cord is not damaged then the electricity will be there it will be running in the uh, uh, in the cable but it will be safe it will be controlled in a way that it will not cause any harm it uh, what this tries to mean is uh, because of the subscribe to this channel so that any new video uh, you will be the first person to receive it and benefit from the knowledge thank you so much uh, for watching and let's meet in the next video